the video and see see what you were saying. So uh, that was uh, Phil and Clarky there setting our challenge for us. First of all, I should say I did scroll back the video and you cannot lip read There's no what way. Clarkie's Unless saying. you can lip read through the back of his head. Yeah, you can't tell, but we did try. However, Phil then did drop me an email uh, with a little bit of a clue. He said, you might want to ask your local democracy reporter for assistance. Ooh, he... And so I did. And the reason he suggested that, you and Gorn, is because one of those voices is yours. It is me, yes. And you asked me, did I remember before? And I said no, but I've actually had to think about it. And I think I remember coming up to do it when I was very young and Manx Radio looked very different. And we went all the way upstairs and Bobby Bob was there. Uh-huh. And he asked me to to say some things in Manx. And I think that's the memory I'm recollecting, but I might be wrong. And you, it's your mum as well, isn't it? That's the other voice. Yeah. I think it's Annie as well. And then we were thinking that maybe the older voice might have been Ned Kelly. Would that be a good shout, do you think? I know you don't remember yourself, but does that seem like a good shout? It's a good guess, yeah. Yeah, it's a good I'm guess. I'm not entirely sure, though. And because at the end of it, there is an amen said, I was wondering if it might have been the Lord's Prayer um, that was being spoken in Manx. Am I allowed to give it away? I don't yeah. know. Well, that's I am. Oh, right. OK, so th- I-, I am giving away. I-, I think it is the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, oh, at least okay. the end of what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. certainly. There you go. There so we, go. we think it's that. But what was it like then growing up in a household that was, it w- was there a lot of Manx spoken in your household then when you were little? Yeah, loads. It was only Manx, I think, until basically until I started to go to school. Uh, and then when you go to school, everyone else is speaking English and you come back. And this is before the Bun School. So my sister got to go straight to the Bun School. But I think, uh, yeah, before that, everything was in Manx. And uh, yeah, I was really good at it then. I'm not so good at it now. <laughs> and why Why did your parents feel it was important back then? Because as you just suggested, it was quite early days, wasn't it, for the resurgence of the Manx language? Yeah, well, obviously they were behind, well, uh, particularly um, my dad, Munja Vega, and doing all the stuff in the, in the play groups, which I was part of. Um, and it's just a passion for them. It, they've moved that on to me. Obviously, growing up in Craig Niche, you know, with all that around you, it's hard not to understand why it's so important and, and the need for people to, to champion it and continue it. So that's why I, I think they've taught it to me. And also, so it's fun speaking in a native language, especially, I mean, they used to make up all kinds of stories and songs. And obviously, they're quite creative like that. But that's fun because you can just do what you want and make stuff up. And, and obviously, when you're raising a child, that's fun. And I think it, I think it rubbed off because I really enjoyed it too. <laughs> and you mentioned Craig Niche there, growing up in Craig Niche there. It is, of course, fast approaching Hop Chine and there'll be a lot of activity going on at Craig Niche. How, how did your family um, celebrate Hop Chine? Yeah, we, we obviously had turnip lanterns, which was uh, we're not allowed to use a drill, was Dad's uh, <laughs> sort of <laughs> quite cruel right, quite right punishment. Too. It had to be like the most haggard, rusty spoon you could find and you'd be there for hours and you'd just be thinking, why am I doing this? But anyway, once you'd, once you'd done that uh, you know several weeks later um we used to go around all uh, the houses singing obviously all the traditional songs which version of Ginny the witch did you sing oh i'm gonna say a few versions one. to be kind because <laughs> i'm not uh, obviously there's hot debate on that but uh, no no yeah all the traditional songs going around all the houses uh, it, was, it was great it was really good I should say I've got two tasks. I've been tasked this weekend by Sue Woolley to carve out my moot in advance of next week because she's popping up to the afternoon show to show Alex and I how to put a nice design on our turnips. Uh, And also uh, your mum, Annie, is popping in on Monday to tell us all about some of the traditions and things along with Julie Matthew. So we've got a lot going on next week with regards to Hop Tune. Mm. We haven't asked him yet if he knew what the Manx word was. I'm going to assume he did. He looked like he knew it. Did you know what the Manx word of the day was? I think it was was? quite a helpful clue. Don't don't say what it was, but do you know? I'm not going to highlight for any of our eagle-eared listeners. Do do you like Pronigan? Um, (laughs) This is difficult. Um, Yes, yes, I do. I mean, I could give a massive clue away by doing it, but I'm not (laughs) going to. That's probably best not. I'm going to put a plea out as well. When you're doing your turnip... Don't I mean? There's always that feeling that I'm sure lots of people throw away the in parts of the turnip, and of course it makes fantastic soup. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Turnip head soup. You know, make it with whatever you want. But I mean, turnip with you know, just have straight turnip. Mix it with other veggies. Mix it with bacon or chorizo or something, and it just makes really. Or pronigan. Really, or exa- pronigan. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. That was good. Yeah. good. No, nice there. link. You and thank you so much. I Go think remind more. We haven't done too <laughs> badly. Um, I'm not convinced that we've got the first the first one right necessarily. The, but the voice. Yeah. yeah. Two out of three ain't bad, is it?